Hello everybody, Adrian Plus here. Yeah, I'm Bridget yet again. Hello. So, this is number nine, yeah, I think I'm right in saying. It is. Um, so, nine weeks since we started sounding in the shallows. Yeah, and we're and still sounding them, aren't we? Yeah, but, but people are still um, sending stuff to us, which is really good. Oh, they are. They are. Because last week we mentioned, didn't we, that... Um, there's sometimes for lots of people there's a special place where they sort of set it aside things when things happen in their lives maybe mm. good things or difficult things and we were talking about the fact that we make a little trip to Ripon Cathedral that's right and just yeah. just sit there quietly and yeah. it's our I mean I know some people call it a trysting place don't they I just call it two seats we sit on in Ripon yeah. Cathedral but well, probably is that no yeah. and yeah. and that's exactly the sort of thing that you've been sending us I mean yeah. Somebody said, well, there's a special place in Ashrick. And she longed to be able to go there during the lockdown. And I think it was her, actually, who also mentioned that St Albans Cathedral is very important for That's her. Right, yeah. Maybe for the same reason, mm. I don't know. And uh, someone we've known for quite a long time said, uh, there's a special beach for us on the Isles of Scilly that is magical and a bit mysterious in the effect it has on us. And we heave a sigh of relief when we get there again. I hope you get there again <laughs> Yeah, sometime. absolutely. Well, one person said it's a little car park overlooking Broadhaven mm. Bay in Pembrokeshire. And that this person loves watching the sunset over St David's. And that actually living in Lancashire, it's quite a journey. That's probably rather the same as the Isle of Scilly. It makes it even more special when they get there. Yeah, absolutely. But then somebody else said it's communion. Yeah. And it's meeting Jesus in the middle of communion. And we would agree with that. And uh, I was saying this week when we did our Skype communion with people we usually do it with, that um, um, I love the vulnerability of Jesus when he says, I've so longed yes. for this. I've so longed to be with so you, my friends. So longed to be here, yeah. he says. It's very sweet. Yeah, communion's very, very important to us, isn't it? Mm. And others, there's a little... Another person said there's a little place called, I think it's called St. Binos in North Wales. I think that's right. Uh, and she says, I can be quiet and create things there. Mm. And also mentions a gate by wood. Mm. A gate and by wood. And I was wood. thinking I about like it, that. Adrian. Yeah. And I was, that's a yeah. very simple, isn't it? Yeah. 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 yeah, special place. And I was thinking, uh, if I had to really sum up, what has become the most special place for me it's the chapel at Scargill but for the same reasons it is a beautiful mm. chapel but it's that when I walk through the door I kind of feel as though I've come home and that I can just sit there quietly and I can be me mm. and I think that's what all these things are about really yeah well somebody mentioned the doldrums didn't they feeling they were in the doldrums and we seized on this because it's a nautical term yeah and it, it was interesting to look up it's always interesting to look up dictionary definitions because we always think we know what words mean but probably this will be close to what you might have thought so there are two definitions uh, one is a state or period of stagnation or depression and that certainly will apply to some of us some of the time yeah. over the last few months and number two was a place and it's an equatorial region of the Atlantic Ocean with calms, storms, and light, unpredictable winds. <laughs> so there. And I think that actually just about covers all of us, those two definitions, because it is still unpredictable. Absolutely, it, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And there's still not very much reinforcing who we are. It's a real snakes and ladders thing at the moment, I think. Every time we think we're on a ladder and mm. we move forward, maybe somebody's gone on holiday or whatever, and then everything crashes and it's... I don't know. I think we're picking up a bit of a feeling of disappointment mm. in other people, but in ourselves as well. We perhaps didn't do quite as well as we thought we were going to. Well, we were bound not to do as well as we thought we were going to. <laughs> yes. And we have often said that we want to write a book called Journeys to Square One, <laughs> yes. because that's where we end up so very, <laughs> very often. And with the lockdown, I mean, looking back, um, I remember when it started for us and there... There was a, a sort of excitement about it because it looked like a real opportunity, which it was. So I was going to play, the, learn to play the guitar. I mean, I, 
I play a few chords. I was going to learn finger picking. Well, and you are still well. I am. No, I, I am. Unfortunately, my hand effect, the hand affected by my stroke means I can't learn it quite as well. I was also going to lose weight. <laughs> yes, well, I we're not going to talk about that for either of us. That's been put off for a while. <laughs> so after a while, yeah, and I did stick to um, the guitar, and I still try to play every day. But then the doldrums come and came. And I was trying to think what it's like. And at its worst, its worst, it's like being in a waiting room where nobody ever comes and you can't get out. Yeah. And that's a, not a nice yeah. feeling. And, and I think for us, and I'm picking up for quite a lot of people, it's also that sense that you're faced with yourself in this waiting room. Um, God's in there. That's what you believe. But it doesn't always feel like it. Mm. And... Um, Nobody else is either. And somebody wrote to Just us... Just saying quickly, the irony of that is that being in Scargill Chapel and other pla trysting places, that's what people want. When you get it in a different setting yeah. it, or for too long, it can be really tr tricky, can't mm. it? So is that to do with it being your choice, do you think, that you choose to go there? You. You feel positive about I, it? I think it just doesn't make sense to be in the same place forever no, and ever and ever, probably. No. Anyway, yeah, go well, on. Well, uh, somebody wrote to us and we did ask if we could share this because, well, it sort of summed things up for me. I mean, this particular person was given your book, The Shadow Doctor, for her birthday and it made her cry because she thought about the shadows in her life. And she said, mm. I really struggle with my relationship with God for a lot of reasons. One of the reasons is I think I sometimes forget who I am. I forget who God is. I forget why I have friends. I forget why anything matters and everything is terribly uncertain. And the terrible fear that there's no mystery and that God is a cosmic plaster to cover a gaping void. I've always found God in people and in poems and I don't really know if I have a relationship with him or not. And to me, that summed up finding God in people, but you're not with people, mm. you know. Mm. And uh, mm. what did that make you think? I, I, I have to say that although it's a bit dark, I, I liked it mm. because it was honest. And mm. uh, I mean, we, our lives are, our lives are all about God and love and everything and all that stuff and everything, you know. Mm. But the 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 groaning inside the groaning and the grace uh, as someone once said in an email to us the groaning and the grace are the things mm. one is prayer and mm. one is the great good luck of mm. having met god and mm. but yeah the groaning needs to be done and the grace needs to be received and it's it's none of it is very easy no, i don't think no it's not um i suppose for some Christians, the, the whole doldrums thing is perhaps a sort of realization that the sails, whatever the sail, the things, the things that drive you on, that and they're keeping the boat, the movement, sails, yeah, well, the <laughs> things that the things that actually make you move, yeah, yeah, um, they have in 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 Christian terms, they have to be filled by the Holy Spirit mm. and not by um, activity and activities, although that's always part of it. Mm. And it can be very alarming um, to discover that that is true. A lot of things about the Bible and faith are alarming when they turn out to be true, I can tell you. <laughs> I mean, the upper room, I was thinking the other day that when the disciples met in the upper room, one or two of them might have thought, well, this is the doldrums. They wouldn't have used that word. But mm. um, what are we doing? What mm. are we waiting for? Mm. What exactly is going to happen that's going to change mm. anything? Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose the difference with them and us is that they've been told by Jesus, we're being told by Boris and co, mm. and that does make it a bit different. But the truth is we're bored, aren't we? I mean, that's the problem with being becalmed. It's jolly boring some of the time. It was quite creative, as you say, at the beginning. For a lot of people, they had permission to stop doing things they didn't want to do. Um, they were bobbing in the same bit of water though um, mm. and uh, with the same people and sometimes mm. that's with quite a lot of people mm. bobbing away um, yeah. it isn't surprising people want holidays really is it and maybe are are therefore pushing the rules and 
mm. and getting into danger and somebody said to us that the problem is there's nothing to look forward to it's not it's not like that at yeah, the moment you have to create it for yourself so often at yeah. the moment and i it's interesting that, that one or two people have said things to us like i i know i shouldn't but i feel bored i know yeah. i shouldn't but i feel angry i know i shouldn't but i feel sad and that there is perhaps it's something we might learn is that it is ridiculous to not allow ourselves to be human yeah. and very briefly i mean off the top of my head jesus was what was he angry frustrated shocked puzzled and yeah. and in despair at, at a couple of points do you think he got bored well i don't know if he got bored <laughs> i'll ask him when i meet him but uh, he may say well i read a couple of your books and that wasn't oh. easy but no i i he was he was truly man and truly god and therefore he was subject to all the human emotion so I think you would understand mm. and but who knows perhaps bored by being with the same people all the time I think <laughs> we said a while ago that uh, on that long walk where they eventually halfway arrived at the well where Jesus met the woman right. in Samaria he may have sent all 12 disciples off shopping because he thought I really have got to have a couple of hours without them I don't know <laughs> my don't mother know. used to call it the screaming habdabs you know my and, mother did too yeah. <laughs> and I think yeah. that quite a lot of people stuck especially if they've got large families and they're all there in a small house of getting the screaming habdabs oh, really I'm sure they do yeah yeah but um yeah I've got a confession right mm. um you know zoom church which actually I love I love seeing everybody in their little boxes and feeling a little bit part of it yeah and the talks are interesting in theory, but there's something about watching somebody in a very small box mm. that seems very tiring somehow. We see people in their little boxes all looking equally slumped. And you Bridget, nearly nodded off. Bridget, both of us <laughs> have not just been on the edge of sleep. <laughs> it's not about the no, content. No. It's something about that situation. Yeah. And I, I hope everyone feels it because yeah. I'm going to feel a bit bad. But when we I... say we're in danger of going to sleep, we're not in actual danger are we no not not like Eutychus um I <laughs> uh, don't know if you remember Eutychus Eutychus is mentioned in Acts yes, I remember. Eutychus on a hot evening was sitting on a windowsill maybe three stories up I don't know and Paul had been talking for three yes, hours three right. Hours. Not 20 minutes Paul of Zoom. did not three get hours. bored with hearing his own voice. There is no doubt about no. that. Um, and uh, I, I, <clears throat> it's got nothing to do with that, but I often wonder about Eutychus waking up and finding Paul lying full length <laughs> on top of him. And Eutychus <laughs> thinking, what on earth is going on here? Um, but fortunately, he was healed and he went back home. And they would have said, how did it go, Eutychus? And he said, oh, died. Yes. Fell off the windowsill, um, and then uh, Paul um, uh, jumped on me and healed me, and now I'm home. So it's I, funny, isn't it, that that's his role in the Bible, his total part. Yeah, that is you it. Know, he, lay, yeah. he sat there, yeah. he got bored, fell asleep, yeah. fell out, yes. got laid on by Paul and came back to life. Well, and Paul, that's... Paul did it. He, I'm glad he sorted yeah. it out. Yeah. 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 It's interesting, though, isn't it, about Paul, because we're talking about being becalmed. Yeah, that's true. And, and Paul spent, we, we talk about Acts as a, 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 an exciting, moving, living drama. Which it was. Uh, which it was. But he also, Paul spent ages in one place, mm. didn't he? Um, arguing and talking and mm. working it out mm. and inviting people to fit all those things. Mm. And, uh, and probably got very frustrated, you know? Yeah, he and, probably and did. And disappointed yeah. sometimes yeah. that things weren't happening. It's probably a waste of time to ask what being become means because it will only invite the usual rationalization fest where people talk about how actually it means something else. It's, it is just being become. Mm. That's mm. what it is. Mm. Yeah. I heard something on the radio the other day, which was a rower talking about rowing across the Atlantic. And I found it very interesting because she, she said she set out. It was all very buzzy and exciting and people came out in their boats to see her off. And then they said goodbye and the darkness came. And she said she realised she needed to belong mm. to the dark. And I thought that was really interesting. We're talking about this becalming thing mm. where you cannot move. And she knew in her case she was going to wait till the sun came up. She was very, very bit mm. frightened and very alone. 
But that's interesting, isn't it? To give yourself permission to belong yeah. to the dark and just to just just relax. I remember really. us mentioning C.S. Lewis said something about um, having to discover later in his life what it meant to celebrate the non-absence of God. Now we don't quite have time to unpick that at the no. moment, but uh, it's certainly in that in that area. Yeah, and there is a bit in one New Testament book that talks about running ahead and that being a real mistake and yeah. uh, all of our um, previous one uh, daily things were called No Shore in Sight yeah. and the line from the um, the piece of writing we, we drew that from said No Success No Shore in Sight mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. that's a, a situation perhaps No, maybe we'll think in. about that a bit more another time I mean I was thinking you know your very first definition of doldrums let mm. me just, where was it? What did you say? You said that it was a state of stagnation or depression. Yeah, that's And that's right. a different well, it's not sort of... not my definition, no, by the way. the one you read out. See, Oxford but that is a different sort of doldrums, isn't it? Yeah. Because it's a depression is exhausting and grey and you're not able to see your way forward, really. Mm. I don't know, is that waiting room mm. forever, not having the energy to open the door, not waiting for anybody else to... Yeah, there's um somebody sent us a poem, didn't they, by Gerard Manley Hopkins, and they were it was a, just a small group of poems that were written when he was very very depressed, and there was a line in this that gives me hope, gave me hope. I love this thing has. you're going to write now, uh, read now. Soul yeah. self, come poor Jack self, I do advise you, jaded, let be. Call off thoughts a while elsewhere. Leave comfort root room. Let joy sighs at God knows when to God knows what, whose smiles not wrung see you. Unforeseen times rather, as skies between pie mountains, lights a lovely mile. And it was that skies between high mountains when you can't see a way ahead at all and then a lovely mile is created mm. and I think the, the profundity of that kind of uh, highlights how simplistic we do get about yeah. the experience of depression and belief and faith and all those other things um, this is something I wrote we'll finish with this uh, some time ago and it's a kind of a bit troubled but but like a psalm, it mm. kind of turns up at the end. It was when you were coming through uh, such a dark time, wasn't it? That's right. And it goes like this. It's called Shades of Blue. Does winter end in seaside towns when councils paint anew the railings on the promenade in hopeful shades of blue? And if the tide loved Brighton Beach, would God come down and say, with gentle hands upon the surf, you need not turn today. <laughs> Will massive Church of England bells have faith enough to ring and overcome their weariness <coughs> excuse me, when they believe in spring? Are there machines for measuring the power of my prayers and anyway and anyway and anyway? Who cares? I think you care but gently. Mm. I think because you do, the colour of my sadness is a hopeful shade of blue. Mm. And moving from that and anyway and anyway and anyway who cares to seeing that little tiny bit of light opening up mm. and realising I think you care but mm. gently. Yeah, yeah. It's what a hopeful, I hope for. hopeful shade of blue. Hopeful shade of blue. Yeah, all those who are blue, <laughs> a little bit of hope. Yeah. And it would be lovely to hear, wouldn't it, of any little hopeful shades of blue that you don't have to have discovered during this lockdown period or this doldrums, but any time in your life, really. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye.